Hello, Nicole Mashburn, and we're going to talk about the peripheral nervous system. So what is the peripheral nervous system? So let's go back to our chart. We have the nervous system divided into the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord, and then the peripheral nervous system, which is then divided into the sensory or afferent division, and then the motor or efferent division. So we're going to introduce the topic of the peripheral nervous system now, and then we'll go through and talk about these different uh, parts of the peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system, or anything outside of the brain and spinal cord, it includes the receptors, uh, touch receptors, uh, vision receptors, hearing receptors, uh, your peripheral nerves, uh, ganglia associated with those, and any motor endings. So uh, the ends of the nerves that go out to the muscles and cause them to contract. All of this is the peripheral nervous system. So just as a reminder, your peripheral nervous system has nerves. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about cranial nerves and spinal nerves and then some other nerves as well. And I, we've already talked about what a nerve looks like, but just as a reminder, a nerve is a bundle of uh, myelinated and unmyelinated peripheral axons. And you wrap that with an epineurium. Uh, these are fascicles that are wrapped with a perineurium. And then you have your individual axons wrapped with an endoneurium. So this is a nerve, and again, we've talked about that before, just to make sure that you remember before we move forward. So when we classify the nerves, uh, we classify them based on what they do. Um, are they afferent or efferent? Uh, are they bringing information in, afferent, uh, sensory, or taking information away, causing a response, output, or efferent uh, nerves? Are they somatic? Are they going to the skeletal muscle, or are they going uh, to the viscera? We call these autonomic nerves. Are they sensory? Do they only bring information to the brain? Are they motor? Do they only bring information away from the brain? Or do they do both? Uh, we have um, definitely nerves that are mixed, that are both somatic, uh, afferents and efferents, and we have nerves that are visceral, afferent and efferents. And again, we're going to talk about, uh, in two different videos, uh, the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. But this time, we're just going to introduce the concept of peripheral nervous system, and then we'll go into more detail about these two types of nerves in a later video. So an important component of your peripheral nervous system are your receptors. Uh, the sensory receptors are the things, the specialized tissue that responds and allows us to perceive uh, what's going on in our environment. And so these are specialized uh, tissues that respond to changes. It may be a light change for vision. It may be a, a pressure wave, which allows us to hear. It may be a, a, a mechano uh, pressure, allows us to touch. Chemical allows us to smell. So any type of receptor, uh, when they're activated, they cause a potential, like an action potential, that will generate an impulse and a signal to your brain. Uh, this sensation uh, then goes to your brain, your brain perceives it, integrates it, and decides uh, what it is, uh, maybe makes a memory, and then if it requires an output, we'll send the appropriate output out to whatever muscle gland uh, that needs to be uh, affected. So when we talk about these receptors, we talk about them based on the type of stimulus that they recognize. Uh, so the first ones are your mechanoreceptors, and these are things that respond to touch and pressure, vibration, stretch, itch. So these are simple, uh, you know, they are just, uh, when you touch these receptors, they fire. You have thermoreceptors that are sensitive to changes in temperature. You have photoreceptors that uh, respond to light. These are in your retina of your eye. You have chemoreceptors that respond to changes in chemicals. Uh, smell is a chemoreceptor. Taste is a chemoreceptor. Uh, there are receptors in your body that respond to changes in blood pH or uh, blood chemistry. You have nociceptors, and these are pain receptors. Uh, and it can be things uh, like very hot or very cold or a lot of pressure or even something that's inflammatory, like an inflammatory chemical. So these are your basic types of... Uh, of receptor types. Um, you can also classify them based on where they are, uh, their location. So you have exteroreceptors, which are things that respond to uh, things occurring outside the body. So for example, uh, skin receptors, touch, 
pressure, pain, temperature, all these are, are superficial and they respond to changes uh, that's going on outside of our body. And then receptors, and they respond to changes inside of our body. These are things like the chemical changes in our body. Uh, when, your, when your muscles are stretching, your tissues are stretching, when you get internal temperature, when your core temperature is going up. And then you have proprioceptors, which respond to changes in position. Uh, so these uh, are things, there's actually things, uh, receptors on your muscles as they stretch and allows you, if you were to close your eyes and bend over, you would feel the stretch in the muscle that was kind of holding you up and that would allow you to know where you are, how you're oriented. Um, so you have these uh, in your tendons and joints and ligaments, uh, these proprioceptors. So again, if you were to close your eyes and bend over, uh, you would feel which position you're in based on these receptors firing in your bones and tendons and uh, tendons and muscles and ligaments. And all of these would send signals to your brain to allow you to know uh, where you are in space. You can also classify them on how complex they are. And your complex receptors are vision, hearing, equilibrium, smell, and taste. And these are actually your special sense organs. Uh, touch is not a special sense because it's a simple receptor. So your tactile receptors, your, your touch receptors, those are simple uh, receptors but the chemical uh, receptors of taste and smell, uh, the uh, light receptors of vision, and the, the uh, receptors of hearing and equilibrium are more complex. And we'll do that in a special lecture on the special senses, uh, how they work. They're, they're a lot more uh, harder to understand than just simple touch receptors. With a, with a touch receptor, I'll go ahead and explain that to you now. So here's a receptor, and when you touch it, when you apply pressure, a mechanoreceptor, that causes it to fire, so it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, these simple receptors, some examples, again, would be thermoreceptors. You have hot and cold nociceptors for pain. You have light touch receptors. Uh, you have things called Merkel discs in your hair follicle receptors. Uh, you have some mechanoreceptors. We covered Meissner's and Pachinian back in the skin unit. Uh, Meisner's is discriminative touch. Tinians are for deep pressure. You have uh, your feeding in endings, which are for continuous pressure, like when you're sitting on your, your um, sitting down for a long, long time, you kind of feel it in your gluteus area. Uh, you have uh, mechanoreceptors in your muscles. You have uh, them in your tendons, which are called Golgi tendon organs, and then some joint kinesth kinesthetic receptors. That's a hard one to say. Um, so again, all of these are your simple receptors and they um, are found all throughout your body to allow you to sense your environment uh, both outside and inside. Now, once you have these receptors firing, just because they fire, you have to be, be able to uh, be aware of that. And so in order to survive, you have to uh, be able to not only to sense it, but perceive it and make a decision about it. So the sensation is the awareness of changes in the external and internal environment. Okay, so your, your sensors, your receptors are picking that up. Uh, the perception is what's going on in the brain. It's that conscious uh, interpretation of these stimuli. So for example, if you put your hand down on the, to a hot stove, um, you can touch the hot stove. You, you feel it and it's hot, but unless your brain perceives that as dangerous, you may not pull your hand away and you would burn your hand. So you need the brain to recognize and perceive what those stimuli are and then to make an appropriate response to that stimulus. So you not only have to have the receptors, but you have to have, the, have to have the brain to perceive it and integrate it and make a decision and a response. And the way this happens, it uh, takes several different levels and I just wanna kind of show you a little bit to kind of put everything in perspective and think about the whole nervous system as a whole. And so you have your receptor level, and so this would be an example of those proprioceptors in the joint. This would be a stretch receptor, uh, and this would be a pain or cold receptor. So um, this information will go from the skin or the muscle or the joint through the spinal column, through the spinal cord. Uh, and then, remember I told you the thalamus was your post office, your sorting center? Well, this information will come up the thalamus will then sort it to where it needs to go and it will go to the correct uh, area of the brain uh, so that the brain can then perceive it and, uh, and sense it as a perception and then make a response if needed. 
So just kind of a visual of how this is actually working from sensation to perception, going from the receptor through the thalamus and up to the cerebral cortex. Now there's something called referred pain, and when I say pain, you can imagine if I was to you know, cut my arm or cut my hand, uh, my brain would, would sense that the pain was coming from that area where, where the nerve was hurt, the receptor, the nerve damaged, I would know where the pain was. Um, but your viscera, your organs, um, we don't always have a reliable way for them to let us know that they're hurting. And so um, they don't actually have pain receptors uh, like we think about with our skin receptors. And so we have something called referred pain, which is when the visceral pain, I use quotes about that, um, is sending its signal, its afferent signal, and it's coming through the same spinal nerves as the pain from the afferent axons from the skin and the muscle. So what I'm, give me, let me give you an example, uh, is the, like when you have a heart attack, a lot of people, the symptom that they have is not heart pain or chest pain, it's pain radiating down the left arm. And that's because the heart, it's the pain that it's, um, that it's sending, it's going through to that spinal nerve, it's basically coming up with the same spinal nerve coming from the arm, and as this pain signal is then trans, uh, or carried up to the brain, the brain has never experienced heart pain before, um, so it kind of is confused and it assumes it's arm pain, okay, because it's coming through that same set of nerves. Um, so this is something I want you to read about. It's in your textbook, so take a few minutes to, to read the little, ex, little section on referred pain. It's an important diagnostic tool. Uh, you don't want to overlook it. Um, someone may come in with shoulder pain, and so your first guess would be, oh, they've hurt their shoulder, uh, they've got bursitis, when actually it may be the referred pain from the gallbladder. So I want you to take a look at this picture and kind of get an idea of where some of the zones are uh, that refer pain for the different organs, okay, because it's a very important diagnostic tool is referred pain. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about in this video, and I will see you again later.